Hey, Bills Mafia. This is Jake. I'm the producer on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Just wanted to throw a quick disclaimer out. Uh, We do not mention Ken Dorsey in this podcast in terms of his firing because the podcast was recorded before it happened. So just wanted to throw a quick disclaimer out and yeah, enjoy the show. Buffalo Bills fall to five and five on the season with one of the most embarrassing losses in my recent memory. Um, We're going to be breaking that down on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into a dreary podcast this week. Um, Bills falling to five and five on the season with just an utterly embarrassing loss. Um, I want to apologize off the top here. Um, I'm not feeling really great this morning. A little bit headache, sore throat. Um, Got to power through this one. It's not not the podcast I was hoping that we'd be doing today. Um, and and truth be told, I mean, even even if the Bills managed to scrape a win out of that game, are any of us really feeling much better today? I mean, a win's a win. I know end of the year we're not going to be talking about how they happened, but. Is there any world where the Bills deserve to win that game at all last night? Um, I mean, just one of the most embarrassing performances that I can remember under, in particular, under this McDermott era. Um, Just so many discipline issues, so much sloppy football. Um, When they keep talking about complimentary football, like this, this is as far from complimentary as you can get. And I don't even look at the complimentary as, you know, the offense has to control the game to, pr- to protect the defense, any of that. Um, for me, complimentary is just like all three phases doing their jobs together um, to, to get a win. Um, last night, we saw the defense give absolutely everything they had to continue giving the offense opportunities. Uh, the offense looked terrible. Um know some flashes in there like like we've seen in the previous few weeks um which makes it even more frustrating because they just you know have all these drives where they're terrible and then up oh, they just snap it together and it's you know a seven play 80 yard drive that takes a minute and it looks like they did nothing to do it no effort and then you know the rest of the game they just kind of lackadaisical all that um special teams had a pretty rough game out there. Sam Martin continues to struggle with some punts. Um, kick coverage, punt coverage, not great. Um, this was another game where the field position battle um, <clears throat> just seemed like every drive, um, the Broncos were starting at like the plus 40 territory. And I mean, honestly, for as depleted as this defense is, um, you're talking we have Razul Douglas getting all the snaps at CB1. He's been in the building for like a week. Um, you know, just all the injuries they have, the huge injuries. And to keep this game winnable with everything that happened, um, hats off to the defense. Uh, it was just kind of squandered, you know, so... We start off the game, first play of the game, James Cook fumble that we lose. Um, Defense stands on its head. You know, they only allow three points, but the ball didn't really move. They did pretty much all they could. Um, We follow that up with, you know, the very next play. Um, It was damn near a Josh Allen interception. We almost started out the game with two plays, two two turnovers. Um, Threw an ill-advised ball and... You know, fortunately, I believe it was a linebacker. Um, just wasn't able to get the second foot down and bounce. But I mean, it, it was a very turnover worthy play. Um, we see the turnover on the exchange between uh, Josh Allen and James Cook. Uh, the drop from Gabe Davis, um, you know, just going right through his hands. And, and, and I know that's a missile of a ball coming to him. Um, but I mean, that that ball hits both his hands goes directly through it and leads to another interception. Um, that one, when the bills were kind of in position to, to be getting into 
you know, talking touchdown territory. Um, just sloppy all around on offense. Um, there was some some frustrating aspects of the players' execution. Um, just talked about the Gabe Davis drop. Um, also had, you know, a rare Dalton Kincaid drop that ended a drive. Um, Steph Diggs had a drop in there. Um, just, just all around super sloppy on the offensive side of the ball. Um, like I said, the, the defense gives us a chance to win it. Uh, <clears throat> so basically where I'm at right now is, you know, the last few weeks I've, I've been really pushing back on the, everybody needs to get fired, um, train and, you know, for the last kind of since the Jacksonville game, we've had these stretches where the offense puts it together and a lot of it looks, you know, so close and there's in an opportune turnover or, you know, uh, a decent drive, but they're consistently starting like inside their own 15 and just not able to finish off drives. Um, so I, I've kind of, kind of been feeling like it's so close, like firing everybody's not the move. And after this game, I don't know if I'm just still super frustrated. Um, I tried sleeping on this one, um, <laughs> calm myself down a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm starting to move towards that camp and I, I just don't see it as likely, um, during the season. Uh, of course, by the time this comes out, um, maybe, maybe something will have happened. Um, I just don't see there being any changes made in particular until the bills would officially be, uh, eliminated from playoff contention, um, just with the team they have, um, but there were some really frustrating moments with Dorsey. I mean, between between James Cook and Latavius Murray, um, pretty much throughout the whole night, they're averaging eight yards a carry. Um, I'm never going to be one that sits on this podcast and advocates for like 50 runs in a game. Um, but if there was ever a game to do it, that would have been, that would have been a good one to really keep feeding the running backs, um, which. You know, I, I don't want the team to ever like fully move away from passing. You you do have Josh Allen, you know, great quarterback, um, but he was struggling. And I believe it was right out of halftime. Um, they came out and threw three consecutive plays, went three and out, punted the ball back to Denver. And, and that's just, you know, it's just so frustrating that you're not getting at least one carry in there where these running backs are averaging eight yards a carry. Maybe you get yourself into a uh, second and four, third and two type of situation uh, instead of these, you know, third and nine, third and tens that we keep seeing. Um, it's just, to me, it's it's been so dichotomous with this season of, you know, when the run's not working, we keep running our head into the wall. When the run is successful, uh, we don't stick to it. Very frustrating. I, I got to put some of that on Dorsey. I think there was a lot of player execution issues in this game. Um, I, I haven't even talked about the second worst uh, series in the game. You know, right before halftime, you know, the, the Bills defense gives up a field goal to Denver. Um, we did some clock managing. Okay, we're going to get the ball back. There's about 45 seconds left. You know, maybe we'll go down the field, get a field goal back ourselves. Uh, nope. <laughs> Throw an interception. They get the ball. And instead of, you know, giving yourself a chance to get points before the half, you set the Broncos up for a, a, not just a double dip opportunity, but a triple dip opportunity. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I've, I've seen that happen in a game. Um, it just penalties sloppiness uh, i just don't know how we get to the point where we're not talking about if there has to be changes in the coaching staff uh, that's it's unfortunate that the that it feels like a lot of player execution um you know the, these coaches can't go on the field and make the plays um but at the same time the the discipline the penalties the sloppiness that all that all comes right from the top and and we're talking 
the there was easily another two turnovers that could have happened in this game. Um, the first one I already talked about, Josh Allen on the second play of the game, um, almost throws an interception. Uh, towards the end of the game, James Cook, you know, breaks breaks free, running. He looks like nobody's going to catch him and just kind of drops the ball. And <laughs> this was like, you know, a, a bounce that was finally going our way. There's been so many bounces that didn't go our way. Uh, ball bounces right back into his hands but there there's another turnover worthy play on a night that we already had four turnovers I, I mean there's not many teams in the NFL you're going to have much of a chance beating um, with four turnovers I mean the defense gave you one back um, in the form of a turnover so you're only minus three on the turnover battle um, but that's just kind of how it appears on the stat sheet you know if, if you're watching the game that defense bailed out the offense over and over and over again. I mean, we're talking Denver getting the ball at the 40 yard line midfield and the defense, you know, not just stopping them, but getting a sack in there, um, stopping a run behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, they had multiple drives where Denver's getting the ball like midfield and they come away with no points because the defense just bucked up and stopped them. And, I feel like this has been kind of the trend that I've been seeing, and, and I, I called it last night as it happened. Um, and I told my wife sitting on the couch, I was like, this, this is what's been happening in these games. You know, the, the off offense is just kind of muddling through the game and, and not complimenting the defense, giving them some points for, for what they're doing. And then the offense comes alive like in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden we got a game. And then we need that one one more stop from our defense, and they don't have it in them anymore. They've already <laughs> they've already given you given you like eight nine stops. You know some of these situations where they're holding them to a field goal uh, when it very easily could have been a touchdown. I mean, I'm counting those as stops too. Um, the one touchdown that they give up to Cortland Sutton, uh, yeah, it goes against the defense, but that was also. <laughs> Just an absolute freak play. Um, getting sick of seeing these happen to us. Um, but I mean, Russell Wilson just kind of almost looks like he's throwing it away. And that ball go, goes exactly to where only Sutton can get it. He makes a great move getting his feet down. And just a great touchdown. Um, not too much I can <laughs> blame the defense for on that one. Uh, just all around super frustrating game. Um, and I haven't even gotten to the worst part of it yet. I'm going to save that for after the break, so stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bill's dad. Now back to the show. Welcome back into the show, and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Uh, if you haven't done so yet and you've made it this far, I do ask that you, you know, give me a like, share, subscribe, um, tell a friend about it. I know... <laughs> For me, podcasts are going to be harder to listen to this week. Um, just just the compiling of losses. It's uh, The season is just so frustrating and becoming so unfun. And the past few years, I've just tried to kind of enjoy the ride of, you know, maybe you'll win the championship, maybe you won't. But, you know, having a good team and, you know, being in the conversation for how long we just fucking sucked. It's been fun to be, you know, just enjoying like the last four or five years of, you know, being in the conversation. Uh, the way things are going this year, it's just becoming very unfun to watch this team because we know what their capabilities are. We, we've seen them just absolutely lighting teams up in the past. Um, so it's just really frustrating. Um, and then the way this game ends is just... This is where I start getting into the, you know, do we have to start looking at McDermott? Um, McDermott in particular, I, I don't see there being a change midseason. Um, but I'm looking at this and it's just this this catalog he's he's been building um, over a, a fairly short tenure as a coach. It's going to be year five. Um 
of just these really, really dramatic ways of losing. And I started counting these up last night, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some. Um, but we get into 13 seconds. Um, Hale Murray, the Justin Jefferson play, um, this one last night, a couple this year. Um, I mean, that that Giants game really could have easily gone, si- gone the other way. Um, just building this catalog of super dramatic losses and at a, at a certain point like I don't know who to put that on other than the coaching staff and this one last night I'm watching this you know final drive of the game happen and sitting on the couch I text my brothers a couple group chats I'm in I'm like you know what this is gonna come down to a game winning field goal attempt by Denver like we we don't deserve to have won this game in the least uh but the silver lining was their kicker he already doinked one in the game uh two of the field goals he made were just just squeak through the pipe if it was like you know another yard or two further they're probably not going in so i'm sitting here saying you know what we have no business winning this game um but hey if it comes down to a, you know a game winning kick I wouldn't have a ton of faith in Will Lutz right now. And comes down to it, they set up for the game winning field goal. You know, they're they're even, you know, doing the kneel down, saving clock, out of timeouts. They have to sprint their field goal unit onto the team. They can't stop the clock. You know, just the running clock field goal. And they miss it. We won the game. We won a game that we have no business winning. Uh, and then you see the flag on the field and you know i'm i'm thinking you know what did we get one of these you know horse shit you know hit the hit the center used them for leverage type plays you know you see those kind of happen more in in an urgent situation you know short field goal for the game being on the line players you know try to do that little extra to get a field goal block uh nope uh 12 men on the field it's just something that you can't make up. I mean, you're playing against a team in Denver, three win team that they have to trot on their field goal unit, you know, for a game winning attempt and their operation super clean, you know, offense right off the field, kicking team back on. They had something like 17 seconds to work with. They were set up and ready to go by 11 seconds. Um, On the other side, you look at the Bills and, you know, it looks like defenders don't know who's supposed to be coming off the field. They're scurrying, there's confusion, and we end up with 12 players on the field. I mean, this whole whole possession leading you to there, I mean, the, the Broncos are taking the knee to kill clock. You have this whole series knowing that, knowing that it's going to end with, they're going to run down run down the clock as much as they can and they're going to have an on the fly field goal attempt you knew that i knew that everybody in the stadium knew that we weren't ready and that to me is what pushes this you know one step closer to just the unacceptable um some of these losses you know i can chalk up to you know, defense is super banged up. You're, you know, waiting for the next man up to kind of, you know, get get back to a similar level. There is an adjustment period. Um, you know, trade deadline, bringing in Razul Douglas is some help because you lost Trey White. Um, adding Linval Joseph in free agency. And he's playing significant steps and looking pretty good. Uh some of these losses, like I said, you, you dealt with just a myriad of the worst possible injuries you could have on defense in uh, Milano, Daquan Jones, and Trey White. That's like the three top people you couldn't lose from this defense, and they went down like consecutive weeks. Um, if we were losing, if we lost this game because the defense couldn't stop another team, I it'd still be frustrating, you know, especially being the Broncos, which, you know, they're a three-win team, but they're 
they're not the same team that we saw the Dolphins absolutely schmack. Um, they've kind of been ascending, but still, still a team that uh, you should have beaten. Um, like I said, if it was the defense that cost us this game, super frustrating. I would get it to an to an extent, you know. Being that we can't finish off a game with all of these opportunities that were given to the offense, uh, that that's unacceptable in itself for me. And then just the final the final series there of not being. <laughs> I don't even care if you have your, you know, kick coverage on the field. Leave your same 11 defenders out there. They're kicking a field goal. They're, we're not going to have a fake field goal with time expiring when they need three points. Or what do they? I think they needed two points at the time, whatever it was. Um, we're not going to see some sort of crazy fake. Just leave your 11 guys from defense on the field and just line up for the field goal. Anything would be better than shit. Have 10 people out there. The fact that game on the line, last play that you need to execute to come out of this game at home with a win you had no business getting to fuck that up. There's got to be more accountability than, you know, we'll go back and look at the tape. We need to play with more urgency. All these lines that we have, we keep hearing, um, there's got to be something that changes and I I just I don't know if I don't know that we're going to see that um who knows maybe maybe we get a firing this week and it's you know special teams not what anybody's looking for not going to make us feel any better but special teams was rough today um maybe special teams is the reason we had 12 men on the field maybe maybe it wasn't McDermott um, but this this goes right back to um, the 13 seconds type of conversation for me. Um, there, There's no way that the last play of the game, McDermott doesn't have his hand in what's going on. Um, and like I said, I, I've been keeping this fire everybody stance at bay for three, four weeks now. Um at this point, I'm still not sure I want McDermott to go. But if I saw it, I don't think I'd be surprised. And maybe it's a breath of fresh air. Maybe it's the ch a change that we need. Um, because this team is severely underperforming. Um, just for what the expectations are. Um, and yeah, like I said, I don't see it as likely that they're going to make sweeping changes while there's still, you know, a possibility of making the playoffs. I, th I think we dropped to like 30% chance to make the playoffs after last night, which is actually kind of higher than I expected at this point. But I mean, when you when you look at what the remaining schedule is and losses that we've already taken, um, games that went down to the wire that just shouldn't have, I mean... Does a game last like last night give you any more confidence? Even if we come away with that one with a win and we're sitting at six and four right now, does a game like last night give you any confidence down the stretch? A game like the Giants give you any confidence? Um, you know, losing to the Patriots, uh, they can't even decide if Mac Jones is going to finish a game that we <laughs> we gave Mac Jones like a career day this year. Um, and what, two, three weeks later, there's New England has a chance at a game winning drive and, and they bench Mac Jones because he's so bad that with two minutes left, they want to try Bailey Zappi and see, see if that works. Um, who also throws an interception? I mean, these are the caliber teams that we're hanging in there with. And I'm not even including the Jets. That was just an absolutely atrocious game. But the, the Jets defense has been giving all kinds of teams fits this year. Um, they've taken down a lot of good teams. So I'm going to leave them out of this mix because they, they have a, a very good defense that's keeping them in games. Um, as frustrating as that loss is, I can kind of understand that one more than these other games that we've had. And when I'm just looking at the stretch run here of teams that we have left to play, not to mention this game was another loss in the AFC. I just... I. I'm getting 
last week we <laughs> last week I declared that I'm not slapping the panic button. Uh, I probably should have slapped it last week. You know, I, I tend to be try to stay kind of measured and in, in the middle. Um, I think that leads to a little bit too much optimism at times. But the the panic button is fully pushed right now, and I I have a hard time seeing how this team makes the playoffs because I mean last week I talked about you got maybe you know two maybe three losses that you you can afford to take on the rest of the season um and that's depending on how a lot of other games go and he gave one up to Denver and you know a loss is a loss it counts the same all that but when I'm looking at you know having Kansas City coming up Dallas uh Philly Jets team that you've already lost to a Patriots team you already lost to um, Miami who's you know they've been kind of up and down but they're leading the division right now um, of all the games that you could have lost down the stretch run I don't think Denver was one you could afford to give up just with with the talent of the teams coming in I, I sure hope I'm wrong maybe you know they keep talking about this is the wake up call we needed. This is the wake up call we needed. The same shit every week. Maybe this is the wake up call they needed. Maybe they went out on the season. I don't see it as likely. And you know, we're we're in a position where we're. I mean, this feels very, very drought era. Where you know we're in the beginning of November. The season feels over, and. And I'm getting damn close to, you know, thinking about the offseason and the draft and what we can do to improve this team. And maybe that involves, you know, some coaching changes. Um, at, at this point, I've, I've loved McDermott as a coach and what he's done for this organization over the last, you know, five or so years. If, if this season ended with a change at head coach, I don't think I would be upset right now. There's just been too many game management issues too many self-inflicted wounds lack of discipline um you know all throughout his tenure we've had really high missed tackle rights really high uh penalty rates these are all things that are they're crushing you um just ending drives with you know penalties backing you up turnovers um all that you only get so many possessions in a football game and half of them last night we gave right back to the Broncos um so I don't I don't really know where we go from here um maybe this week I, I know there's a huge contingent of Bill's Mafia that wants Dorsey gone two weeks ago maybe we see a change this week um and I wouldn't be opposed to that maybe you know it gives us a different spark um but I mean who you promoting to that spot midseason? Is it, is it you know Joe Brady? You're not installing a whole new offense, so all you're all you'd really be looking for is a, you know some different play calling and a spark. Maybe maybe that's the answer. Uh, I sure as hell at this point and would be willing to try really almost anything because um, the talent that we have on that offensive side of the ball only got better from last year. Um, and the results just aren't there. And I got nothing else. Something's got to change. And we'll see what happens this week. I I feel much more confident that they're going to take this into the bye week. And if we win the next two games, I don't think you're going to see any changes. If you lose one of the next two games, I could see some changes coming out of the bye week. You know, give everybody that extra week to, to adjust to things, figure things out. Uh, woke up this morning kind of hoping that we'd see some changes and the more I'm sitting here the more the more I think you know and we got two weeks until the buy I don't see them pulling the trigger on anything before then um, so we'll see what happens um, taking on the Jets next um, obviously like I said team we already lost to this year um, doesn't make me feel great that they got a stellar defense and <laughs> A suspect offense because our defense for the most part hasn't been the problem so you know 
slowing down the Zach Wilson offense. You know, hopefully it shouldn't be too tall of a task, but um, our offense trying to get right against that defense, it just feels like a tall task. I'm not. This should be a game that I go into crazy optimistic and, you know, plan on the defense holding the Jets to like 10 points. And does our offense get to 13 points against that defense? I don't I don't know at this point. Um, so. Yep, sitting here today with a, a little bit of, you know, existential dread, feeling like we're in the drought again. Um, and this honestly right now, granted I'm quite a few years removed from the drought, this feels way worse to me than a lot of those, you know, season-crushing uh, drought games just because we, we had so little expectations. And, and every year we would, you know, oh, this is our year. Uh, and we'd convince ourselves of that, but did we ever really believe it? You know, we're Trent Edwards, JP Lossman, Kevin Cobb, Kyle Orton, EJ Manuel, you know, all, all of these, I'm just naming the quarterbacks. Uh, if I'm honest in hindsight, you know, that, that was just thinking it was our year. All those years was just you know, kind of something we, we started saying. And if I'm honest about it, there's never really much belief in too many of those teams. Um, this team is, is very different. We've had success. We've gone to the AFC championship game. You know, we've, we've, we've been knocking on the door and, you know, this off season, we made all the investments on the offensive side of the ball. We brought in, you know, second round lineman brought in McGovern um, drafted a first round weapon in, in Kincaid uh, just all all of these moves and for the offensive side of the ball to be the one that can't get it together I, I if I had the answers I wouldn't be sitting in this chair I guess um, so we'll see what happens this week as we look forward to the Jets um, I do appreciate you joining me even when you know the episodes are Gloom and doom and not as much fun. Um, still hoping that this team can get on track, but losing confidence in in, in groves every week. Um, so we'll touch base again sometime uh, next week around this time after we take on the Jets. Hopefully we finally get to talk about a good convincing win. Um maybe get this team feeling like it's back on track to make uh, a nice stretch run here. Um, but until then, thank you for joining me on this week's episode. As always, go Bills. Go Bills.